Okay guys, it's been a couple weeks and we're well into August here and I figure I would give you guys an update video as far as my progress on this crazy project of mine. Um, so first things first, I haven't had a lot of time to work on this so I've really done the best I can to make use of the time that I've been able to put into it. I am happy to say that I'm way ahead of where I thought I would be by now. So. Uh, since the video that I recorded, I discovered with an insane amount of delight that Microsoft had actually started their own their own project to kick off to get Angle, which is you know an OpenGL implementation, working for the Hololens, and um, they have been making a reasonable amount of progress on it, but it's been ra rather slow, which I can understand. I didn't expect anything from them, but. Um, They've done a mountain of work as far as what I would have had to figure out on my own because they know the HoloLens better than I do. So really happy about that. So they basically have Angle with a really simple tutorial program that, that renders a cube using OpenGL instead of DirectX. I was able to take that and fork it and edit it, much like I was planning on doing with Vanilla Angle, and I have my own fork of that project on my GitHub repo. This is the part, like I said in my video before, that I'm going to be giving back. This is the open source thing. So if somebody's interested in using OpenGL completely by itself with no bells and whistles on top of Angle, and maybe they're a little impatient and they don't want to wait on where Microsoft is, um, they can use my fork. And I've already fixed a couple of very critical issues um, ahead of their branch. Eventually, I expect them to absorb either my changes or better variants of them into their own. Um, into their own angle, and then my my branch or my fork of angle will become less necessary. So all technical crap aside, that basically means that um, OpenGL, I have OpenGL running on HoloLens, which is insane. So I have holographic OpenGL working. Um, so that that was step one, right? That was like step zero. So once I had that working, I was able to actually start running pieces of my graphics engine on the HoloLens. And because all my code is written on top of OpenGL, once I knocked down the OpenGL domino, a lot of things really came together. I mean, there were a lot of issues as far as me having to automatically um, translate my, I guess you could say, mono or, or single render target 3D shaders to, to render the stereo one in each eye rendering. So I, I had to automatically convert all my shaders in the shader source code um, to be stereographic rendering instead of um, standard rendering, which was kind of tricky. But once I had that part working and I was able to follow the lead of, of the Angle Hollow HoloLens demo, I was able to get um, was able to get some of my Virto Studio Engine 3D models to render on the HoloLens, and, and that was amazing. Um, one of the biggest problems I faced in the beginning was that the frame rate was way too low on the HoloLens, only about maybe 30 frames a second, which is half of what it should be. Um, and the way I got around that, luckily, was, was I discovered that I was um, running a debug build of both my engine and, more importantly, Angle underneath. Uh, and Visual Studio debug builds are very slow. So once I switched those up to release builds, I was able to, to get the performance I needed. So once I got some of my own 3D models rendering, I, I was uh, really hard-pressed to, to face or, or to, to get a very important prerequisite for doing Virto Studio on the, um, on the HoloLens, which is the UI component that I've been building myself from scratch uh, on top of OpenGL because I can't use any of the built-in Windows uh, UI frameworks, so I can't use like a Windows button class to render in the HoloLens because once you're in 3D, you have to render everything from scratch, even lines, buttons, text, fonts. It's insane. So um, I kind of foresaw some of that, and I've been writing. It's very early on, but a um, very in, what I would think to be intuitive um, UI framework that sits on top of my graphics engine. Uh, it supports hardware accelerated rendering of views, sub views. Um, labels, buttons, all the stuff you'd expect to need when you're doing this kind of app. And um, that stuff's all layer backed, so it's, it's very similar to, to other mobile frameworks that are out there today. Um, and I've had this running in 2D for quite a while now. Uh, it's, there aren't too many components yet, but it's definitely mature enough for me to consider it you know, worthwhile to, uh, 
to, to move on and, 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 and try to get this rendering on the HoloLens. And I've done some insane amount of work on certain components like uh, rendering really smooth bezier paths and curves and then using those to build up to render controls that might depend on things like smooth rounded rectangles and stuff. And once I had that all in place and rendering on top of uh, 2D shaders in OpenGL, I was really anxious to run that on the HoloLens. So um, I was excited to finally get that stuff running on the HoloLens yesterday and I was able to render for the first time ever my first holographic UI view um, as a hologram. So um, really good spot to be in. That's kind of where I am right now. So I got my 3D models and my 3D engine running. I got my early UI engine running. Um, next step I guess is for me to start making the UI engine um, mature enough so that it can um, support an entire 3D modeling application on its own. Uh, so there's probably going to be, I'm probably going to have to jump back over to this uh, 2D side for quite a while and and uh, and continue working on the, comp you know, independently of HoloLens for a while. And then once they get mature enough, I'm going to the architecture to make it um, better suited for running in a holographic environment. But uh, take one thing away from this video, it's that um, things are going really well. I'm super stoked. I've already got holographic OpenGL running, which means I have a foundation for building um, this app and really any app uh, in 3D for HoloLens. And as somebody who's not too thrilled about languages like C-sharp and technologies like Unity, which I find to be bloated, um, being able to make uh, enterprise quality apps completely by myself, independent of any framework like Unreal or Unity, is, is huge for me. I mean, I'm going to be able to I'm going to be able to do anything now. So um, that is the first update. <laughs> a couple weeks from now, I hope to give another one and, and kind of, um, you know, say where I'm at. I expect there's a lot of roadblocks ahead of me, but I've definitely knocked down um, quite a few already. So stay tuned. Take care.